Town Council will begin debating the proposed fiscal 17 operating budget this Thursday night. To find out more, Channel 18's Sarah Colvin chats with Finance Director Mark Milne on this episode of Barnstable Today. It is Wednesday, June 1st, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. Uh, busy times. Uh, you and, and uh, Tom, of course, presented the budget to town council a couple of weeks ago. Tonight or tomorrow night, rather, um, debate will begin and presentations will begin. So I think uh, a good place to start today is to kind of talk a little bit about how um, the different sections of the budget will be presented. Yes, uh, sure. Tomorrow night we'll um, we'll start off with uh, the airport enterprise fund being the the first item on the agenda. Uh, and presenting uh, the first budget hearing and some big changes for the Airport Enterprise Fund. As you know, um, for next fiscal year, we've touched upon this uh, previously about, um, you know, with the bankruptcy filing of Island Airline, which was a major customer out at the Barnstable Municipal Airport, it will significantly impact their revenue stream uh, next year. And as a result, it, it impacts significantly the expenditure side. So their budget is going down over 23% uh, next year, about $1.8 million. Um, so that will be the first one on the agenda tonight, uh, tomorrow night. And some of the big cutbacks that we, we're going to see in that operation are um, the purchase of jet fuel. They're going to be sell they're selling a lot less jet fuel than they were previously as a result of the, the bankruptcy filing by Island Airlines. Uh, therefore, uh, we won't need to budget as much money in their operations for the purchase of jet fuel. So that's where a bulk of the reductions in their operating budget is going to occur. Uh, additionally, there are two positions um, that will be eliminated um, as a result of the drop-off in business. Um, so uh, those are the two biggest reductions uh, in their budget for next year. So they'll be the first ones up tomorrow night. Indeed, and the two positions being eliminated were those, you know, ones that kind of work directly with Island Air, or, or you know, which how I mean, I'm sure well, it's never an easy decision to make when you have to cut positions. Sure, um, yeah, there isn't a position that works directly with a particular customer. However, um, you know, there are a lot of the operations out there involved the refueling of aircraft, and as a result of much less refueling taking place. Uh, we're able to reduce a position um, in that particular area of, you know, the operations area so that, um, you know, with a, with, there won't be as much to do um, with, uh, you know, the reduction of uh, 200,000 gallons of fuel not being pumped. So sure. um, the other area of reduction was in the maintenance area, a uh, custodial position that was um, – we had a retirement, and uh, fortunately, a retirement that was, so that position will just be eliminated through attrition. Sure. Um, um, oh, go ahead. So, well, that yeah, that's that's uh, basically it. Yeah, we were fortunate enough to have some attrition out there, so uh, to minimize any unemployment issues and any layoff issues. Um, so, you know, that that was fortunate. Great. That yes, yeah, always a good thing. Um, so, uh, after the airport, uh, who's next in line? Yeah, the next in line will be the will be the police department. Um, one of our largest operation uh, in the municipal operations, one of our largest departments. They will be second, and their budget is uh, really not going up much. Um, it's less than one percent this year. Um, but that's mainly due to a significant budget increase in fiscal year 16 that won't be repeated in 17. As you know, we've had a lot of uh, sworn officers retire yes. uh, over the past couple of years. And so we've had to um, budget almost $200,000 worth of training funds in order to get new officers into the academy and trained to replace the ones that retired. And so now that we've had, I think we've had every single officer um, position replaced with the exception of one, I believe. So we ha we don't have to budget those training funds for the academy in their FY17 budget because we were fortunate enough to get them all into the classes in September 2015 and April of 2016. Um, 
So without having to repeat those training expenditures, we were able to redirect monies to other important training areas in the police department, um, as well as provide them uh, additional funds for vehicle replacements, um, computer technology replacements. So um, by being able to redirect those monies, they didn't need to have any a significant budget increase. And the turnover in staff has also uh, allowed us to achieve some breakage savings in salaries because sure. uh, we're bringing in um, new officers at a lower pay grade than the ones, senior officers that were retiring. So all of that combined has allowed us to keep the, the budget increase in the police department uh, to, a, to, a, to a lesser degree. Exactly. Certainly uh, officers at the beginning of their career uh, make a little less money than officers uh, who have served for 10, 20, 30 years. Sure. Um, yeah. And of course, I know too, um, the police department does an excellent job of securing grants for a lot of the things that they need. Um, it's really remarkable to see the work that they do in, in securing some grant funding to help uh, keep, you know, certain operations going. Yeah, a lot of the grant funding has been has allowed us to keep their technology up to date. Um, however, they need more. Um, so we're providing additional funds for that technology improvements in their operations. They're heavily dependent upon technology, as you know. Of course. Um, they analyze data more than any other department. They track data more than anybody. They have to. I mean, they, um, they're, 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 their their nature of their business involves a lot of complicated, detailed uh, um, uh, technology uh, incorporated into it. So no doubt. Um, we're trying to help them out in that sense. So, yeah, so those are the first two big ones up for tomorrow night. Um, and they'll be followed third by growth management, which um, is level funded, essentially. There's no increase. Um, and that's mainly due to, uh, against turnover in staff in that department as well, has allowed us to basically level fund the budget. Um, so there's, it's actually a, a, a less than a thousand dollar decrease in that operating budget. So there's really no no significant changes in growth management. Great. Um, Same staffing levels. Indeed, and of course, I think you know when we talk about the airport, we talk about uh, the the police department. Obviously, a lot of uh, you know a lot of uh, items, a lot of moving parts. I'm sure there'll be some significant discussion on those. You know, reasonably, how much of the budget can we anticipate? Um, you know, getting through tomorrow night. Historically, uh, you know, how how quickly does the process go? Um, well. Generally, you look. We're looking at 10 to 15 minutes per appropriation order. Uh, it all depends on the level of questions that are raised for each particular one. Um, usually, the large departments, the larger the department, the more questions that get generated uh, because there's a lot more and they're a lot more involved. Um, you know, school department, um, airport, police, public works, community services. Those are the big ones, and so. We start the budget hearings in those particular areas. It's typically where we get most of the questions, either from the general public or for the count, from, from the counselors, uh, because they they're dealing they're they're providing the line services the more um, it's more than any other department that that um, you know, reach out to the public and work with the public. So that's what the counselors here, you know, they get their inquiries from regarding the services that those areas provide. Um, so that's generally where we get most of the questions. In other areas. You know, there's one or two questions, and we can get through it in two, three minutes. Exactly. So you, you never can really uh, know what, what's going to happen. So, okay, so we've got airport police growth management. Who's up next after growth management? Then we have the community services, uh, the general fund operations, as well as their four enterprise funds. Um, big changes in the general fund operations for community services. Um, we have several enhancements to the budget in that particular department. Starting right off, of course, with the, the first one is uh, minimum wage increases for all of our seasonal staff. They employ, as you know, more seasonal workers than any other department. And they, um, those seasonal workers are all receiving another $1 per hour wage increase um, as a result of the state minimum wage going up. And so, um, every, so we have to provide additional funding for that. That was about $68,000. Um, secondly, we are incorporating the adult social supportive day program into the general fund operation. Remember, it used to be a revolving fund operation that was supported by the fees they generated. It became, due to a drop-off in participation, the senior center was not able to run that revolving fund program on a break-even basis anymore. So now it requires a subsidy. We've decided to close the revolving fund, put it in the general fund operation, and, and provide some tax support.